Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight in this webinar, Lead Your Career Path in Sweden. My name is Ella Galvis, and I work as a project manager in Switch to Sweden. And we're here tonight with Anna Brothers, who is a project leader. And also, we have a special guest tonight, which is Amanda Herzog. She was an international student uh, in Young Shopping, and she has made her journey through working life in Sweden. So she has collected different experiences that she is gladly uh, willing to share with us tonight. So without further ado, uh, we can continue. First of all, we will go through the agenda. We're going to talk about a little bit about what is to switch to Sweden. Also, we're going to go through key basics to get ready for job hunting. This is something that is relevant to do if you haven't done it yet. Then we're going to follow up with the best practices based on successful cases. These best practices are inspired by 12 success stories of international students that have uh, been hired in Sweden. They come from different programs and backgrounds, and we basically collected the key factors that we found were very representative in their journey into getting hired. Then we're going to give the floor to Amanda, where she's going to show us a little bit about who she is and what was her process in Sweden, um, like how she gets started to work here. Then we're going to continue with an action plan. So we're going to do a self-assessment uh, in a Zoom poll. And based on the knowledge that we're going to share with you guys tonight, you can check like what are the base, best actions that you can follow. And in the end, we're going to finish with some concluding reflections where we can take questions. And based on like the main insights that you have gathered tonight, uh, you can share this with us and we, you can ask me questions to me or to Amanda based on our journeys. Uh, we can get started with Switch to Sweden. So what is this project about? This project is a three-year funded project by Vinova. Vinova is the Swedish a a Innovation Agency of Sweden and is managed by Linship in Science Park. And this is why uh, Anna and me work in the Science Park in Linköping. And the goal of the project is to increase the number of qualified matches between international academic talents uh, who are already in Sweden with Swedish companies. And why is this relevant? Why this project was created? Well, right now in Sweden, there, there is a shortage of talent, mostly within ICT. Therefore, there's a lot of skills required in uh, tech companies, such as uh, software developers or mechanical engineers. And uh, because the talent is not here in Sweden, we need to look to different talent pools, such as international students, to ensure that Swedish, uh, Sweden keeps their competitiveness into the future. And how do we do this? Uh, one of the key activities of this project is the matchmaking activities that you are more than welcome to join. Um, we do this based on skill matching. So basically you can fill in a questionnaire with your skills and this questionnaire is going to be cross-checked with the skills and needs that companies have all over Sweden. If there is a positive match between these skills, you are welcome to join a meet and greet with companies where you can take this opportunity as a network opportunity to uh, get introduce yourself into companies and also do some research about the company. And hopefully it could lead into a recruitment process. However, we have to say that this is not a recruitment activity, it's more like a targeted networking activity, if we could say so like that. Now we can go through the key basics to get ready for job hunting. First of all, you have to think that your CV, cover letter, and LinkedIn profile need to uh, fill in like the um, best practices of the Swedish labor market. For example, when I was here and I started looking for a job, it never really crossed my mind that I had to change my CV according to what uh, the companies looked. Uh, so that was something that was new for me at the moment. So really uh, search like what is the ideal CV for Sweden and make your CV like that. That's the first step. Then look for opportunities in everywhere that you can really. Uh, university, work first, uh, spontaneous applications are really popular in Sweden. So if you like a company, you can definitely contact them and introduce yourself to them and explain why this company is interesting for you. I think this is something very relevant in Sweden is like your key interest or passion 
that is very, very important. So if you really state why would you like to work there and show like your background and how you can fit in into that company, that is really welcome. So don't wait just to apply through job ads. Um, also join associations. For example, I was part of uh, different types of student associations when I was a, a master's student in Nishapin University. Um, and also there is other types of associations in the city. So don't only um, get yourself surrounded by students. I will really encourage you to go outside, go to activities in the city that you're living and try to join even if, if it's a sports club or a video game club, whatever you like. That's very important as well. Lastly, uh, personal projects are very important. In these interviews that we did, there were some students that they started their own personal projects during summer when they were in holidays. Uh, some of them developed a video game and a website, and then this helped him to get connected into a project at the university. And then um, the project teacher of the university happened to be working at Ericsson. And through all those connections, in the end, he got a job offer. So you don't really know how things are going to end. Uh, just opportunities are everywhere. And sometimes you meet the right person in unexpected places. Uh, yes, then you can. Uh, we highly recommend you to research the company that you want to meet. Many times the students, when they're in the uh, meet and greet, they don't really know much about the company. So yeah, this is a key basic, like, uh, really understand their business, what do they need, and mostly focus on how can you help them and ask questions. And it's like, what makes you curious about that company, for example? That is, it's not only answering questions, it's like ask them questions to the companies. They really want to know why are you interested in them. And the last recommendation is work etiquette. Punctuality, rehearsing like the most common interview questions is uh, highly recommended and understanding the process to meet the company. This is more related to Swedish culture. Uh, of course, being polite and giving a good impression, like positivity, like show your personality. Don't be shy and don't like just answer, really show who you are. That's very important. Yes, and now we are going to continue to the best practices uh, based on the successful cases that I mentioned before. Uh, first of all, uh, we can say that being part of networks while you're studying is the first step to uh, job hunt, as I mentioned before. Uh, but this, like, I think like many students focus a lot on their studies and they don't really understand that that's like a 50% of the job. The other 50% of the job is like to network. A network could be with students, with teachers, with anybody. Um, yeah, like there's other opportunities at the university, such as master's thesis, um, meeting new people from other programs and also alumni networks. I really recommend you, if you have access to the alumni uh, of your program, this is a great contact. There's many people that have been recommended to jobs because they had they met an alumni or they reach out to them. So this is a great a way to get yourself introduced to a new workplace. And yes, as, as I mentioned before, like the personal projects also are very, very important. Um, then I think this is something that uh, many students don't really think about and it's understanding the Swedish industry and um, the main companies that you would like to work for. First of all, you have to know who they are, who are the people that are behind these companies, what do they do, what do they need? And most importantly, is their working culture and values. Uh, soft skills and culture are very important in Sweden. So it's not only enough to understand like the culture of the country, you also need to understand the culture of the company. Uh, what kind of values do they have? How do they work as a team? And don't be shy and ask that. Ask like, how do you work with your team? Uh, what do you guys do when you have FICA? I don't know, like be creative and really understand how do they work. Mm, and yes, just gather all this information and think about your specific profile. Like if you come from another country that perhaps could be a good market for the company. Uh, for example, I come from Colombia and I knew a lot about Latin America. So Latin America became an important market uh, for the company I worked for before. That's a good example of how you can be unique in that regard. 
yes, so what is the unique value that you can provide? You have to really think about that to differentiate yourself uh, among the competition. Then something very uh, key here is learn Swedish. Um, yeah, as perhaps you already noticed, uh, most of the job posts are in Swedish. So this is a reality, like uh, companies prefer somebody that they speak Swedish. So you have to do the best that you can to learn the language with the time that you have. And maybe if you're not perfect in Swedish or you haven't reached a level of fluency, it's important that you mention what you do or your interest in learning the language. Uh, this is something that takes time and companies also need to understand that you're not gonna be fluent in one year. So, but really work it out and do the best that you can with this topic. Also learn about migration processes uh, based on your specific case. This is something that we learned in Switch to Sweden is that many companies really don't know how to hire an international talent, especially because uh, it depends of where the talent is coming from. So we have cases where the student actually helped the company to understand the migration process that they needed to do in order to hire him. So in here, like you really need to study and take leadership in your own case, what it, what it takes to hire you and explain that to the company and help them understand because this is not something that companies just know. So really take the initiative with these uh, administrative processes. Mm. Then, uh, it's also important for you to know uh, what kind of skills are more competitive in the Swedish labor market. So there is a very easy way to understand this is just by using the skills as keywords in job boards, such as LinkedIn. So you can see like, depending on your studies or uh, your work background, uh, you just need to see what skills are required and use that as keywords to see how many job posts are about that and what, type of skill board uh, skills are more wanted and uh, align your profile based on this. And lastly, uh, we highly recommend you to be very active, have a lot of drive. This is not an easy process. Generally just getting a job is not an easy process and it becomes harder when you're in a new country with a new working culture, so don't give up. Uh, from all the interviews that we had, nobody said like, oh, it was super easy or, after 50 CVs, it was done. No, it really takes work. So uh, also we want to be really honest that uh, sometimes it really works out and sometimes you need to try more <laughs> if you really want to work in Sweden. So this is something that we want to be very clear and honest. You have to give all your best to make it uh, successful. Yes. Um, so now we can give a word to Amanda. So the floor is yours. So you can start with your story. Uh, great, thanks. Um, thanks for inviting me to speak today. This is a topic that I'm very passionate about because I've been in the same position as most of you that are listening today. So I just wanted to give you some advice based on my own experience in the hope that it'll be easier for you. Um, so yeah, my name is Amanda Herzog and I moved to Sweden from Orlando, Florida about six years ago in 2017 as an exchange student at Jönköping University to study specifically communication and marketing. So I knew right away that I wanted to get a job in the marketing industry in Sweden. And I thought after I graduated, oh, it, I'll get a job quickly. I, I can usually get a job in two to three months, you know, in my home country, I'm from the US. And that did not happen. It actually took me 13 months over 800 applications in that first year, and I did count, <laughs> and an average of one to three interviews a month, which is actually a pretty reasonable rate, um, to finally get a job in my field as a marketing manager at, at Husqvarna uh, AB, which is actually an international company. So clearly it was a lot harder than I had estimated, and this is with good odds of one to three interviews per month. And during that time, what I decided to do was to interview HR and recruiting professionals. I also spoke to other expats and internationals. I was collecting so much information. I did tons of experiments with my CV. Um, I think I had 10 different versions of my CV just to see, is it, are they more responsive to this? Are they more responsive to that? 
I would actually take my CV to uh, recruiting professionals who are Swedish and say, look at my CV and tell me what I need to do to get more attention to learn. And that's how I started to see themes. Oh, they do things differently here in Sweden than in my country or other countries. I also studied the LinkedIn profiles of Swedish professionals and I thought, what, how are they writing it differently than how I would write it? And I also studied interview skills and so on. So essentially what I did is I decided to take all of this information and I founded a company called Intertalents in Sweden with two other internationals who had the same experience. And our goal is essentially to empower other foreign born professionals towards career success in Sweden. Um, if you're interested to learn more about my story, I have a personal website, amandaherzog.com. If you have a marketing background, that it could be especially interesting. And if you'd like to learn more about inner talents, we have an email, uh, a website, innertalentsinsweden.com here on the slide. So I just want to review with everyone some of the key points that I learned over the last six years while I've been living in Sweden. Um, I will go through some of my best secrets and, and tips and advice that I have in the next few slides. But I just want to show you some of the results that I've gotten by learning essentially how to do things the Swedish way and to really take the time to slow down and learn about the differences between my culture and this other country that I'm now trying to adapt to. So as I mentioned in the first slide that I was speaking on, my first job search was in 2018. It took me 13 months to find a job and that was intensive job searching. And now I actually had another recent job search in 2021, um, so about a year or so ago, and it only took me two months to find a job from start to finish, um, mostly because I now knew what to do. And in these two months of job searching, I received requests from 12 companies for interviews. So that's 12 different individual requests for an interview. Most of them were mid-senior roles. Uh, but yes, yeah, so in these two months, I received requests from 12 companies for interviews, and most of them were mid-senior roles. And it's important for me to mention this because if there's anyone here in the group and you feel like you have a lot of experience in your country and then you're moving here and you feel like you only have the option to start from the bottom entry level and work your way up, that is not the case. I was able to get mid-senior roles for something that actually matched my experience level and to be competitive in the market. So have some hope that if you learn some small adjustments, you can achieve that as well. Um, of these 12 companies who contacted me, at least five of them contacted me via a recruiter who contacted me through LinkedIn or a referral. So that's almost half the number of people contacted me came to me rather than me going to them. Uh, my CV was so targeted that I only get asked for interviews in the exact position that I'm seeking. So I think a lot of people confuse some advice that you need to read every job description and tailor every CV in response to that. But I decided to change things up because I felt like that wasn't very sustainable. It's a lot of work. Many times you don't get a call back. So what I did is I found a very, I, I made myself a specialist in companies who were specifically looking for that would come to me and I would be elevated in a group of candidates. So it was sort of like a, a, a productivity hack, so to speak, where I didn't have to adjust myself because I was only attracting people who were looking for specifically me. Um, and so also learning to network the Swedish way grew my contacts by 80 people in just four months. 80 people, a huge percentage, percentage of that group we're also Swedish people. So it's definitely important um, what, you know, Switch to Sweden is mentioning as well in their earlier slides that networking is, is extremely powerful. Um, so now we're here on the next slide. <laughs> and my first um, set of tips is for how to make a Swedish style CV. I know a lot of us here advice of very general advice that's really good for CVs, but what's the difference between a CV in Sweden versus your country? And this is something that I learned the hard way in my early years here. And so one of the first things I that I learned was to describe, describe yourself using adjectives that are popular in Swedish work culture. So I noticed 
particularly when I would go to the LinkedIn page of people who were Swedish professionals, it was very different than in America because they would describe themselves and they would say, I'm a very reliable, prestigious team player. I'm, I'm really energetic. I'm a creative person. And in the US, that's a bit strange. It's almost not credible in a way that you're describing yourself. They sort of want to see it in, in a different way. But in Sweden, as awkward as it was for me at first, I realized that this is how people see that you see yourself. So I would definitely recommend putting one or two sentences in your LinkedIn about section, maybe in your cover letter section. It is okay to do that here and to show others how you like to see yourself and present yourself. I would also suggest creating a portfolio, including behind the scenes photos of you at work, uh, school projects, volunteering, even personal photos of you traveling somewhere. And the reason why is because in Sweden, it's very important in the work culture here, especially in the recruiting culture, that they have an understanding of who you are as an individual. You do have to make yourself a little bit more vulnerable here because they want to get to know you, not just your work version of you, but they want to know how are you outside of work. And so when I actually got my job at Husqvarna, I was recruited by a recruiter and he told me that having a portfolio with photos of myself really helped me to stand out and to draw him to me. And I have a picture of the exact portfolio pictures that I used here to the left. So if you have anything like this, it's definitely okay over here and it, it will give you an advantage. I would also suggest that you make an effort to highlight your strengths as an international. Uh, for example, for me, English is my native language. So I definitely lead with that. I don't really try to compete with native Swedes because I can't if I don't speak uh, native Swedish on the same level as them. So definitely find your strength. If you've worked with other international companies before, lead with that. Maybe you have a Swedish spouse. I think it's definitely okay here and appropriate to mention that. If you have a strong work ethic or maybe you have experience and expertise in a specific culture. I know at my previous company that I worked for, we hired someone who was from India and we actually were trying to target clients in India. So that was an asset to us. If you are from a specific culture, try to focus on a company that needs your expertise. So highlight your strengths. It's also okay to include your hobbies on your CV. I know in the US, it's you can include hobbies, but it's a bit more broad. Here in Sweden, you can be more uh, open about who you are. Show them who you are through your hobbies, especially if it's a hobby that's very popular in Sweden. For example, sports is very popular here. Anything related to nature, maybe you like hiking. Um, cooking, environmental causes, things like that. So try to create a short hobby section on your CV or your cover letter so they can get to know you. I would not recommend including your age, your address, your marital status, or other personal information. It will come up later in the interview. It can also crowd the CV. You want to minimize the information there. You don't want to put a bunch of things that could confuse them. Also, don't be afraid to say that you had a gap between jobs. In Sweden, there is a healthy attitude towards work-life balance, and they are very understanding of gaps. So if you have a gap, it's okay to explain to someone interviewing you, I had a child, I took time off work, I took time off for studies, um, I had a volunteer project. Don't be afraid to be penalized over here for it because it's seen as sort of a character growth sort of time period, whereas in some other countries, maybe they might not feel the same. It's okay here. Uh, yeah, so my tips for a Swedish style interview, do focus on building a personal connection before talking about what you can bring to the job because they care about your personality, as I mentioned earlier in the CV section. Uh, do feel free to talk about your personal life, including your family, tell them you have children, um, tell them if you have kids or a dog or what your hobbies are, and especially what motivates you in the workplace. I feel that a lot of Swedish professionals see family as an asset because it shows that you are committed. They know that you're motivated to support your family and that you will take your career seriously. 
Whereas in another country, for example, in the US, a lot of people unfortunately avoid mentioning their family because the employer has a different view. They might see it as, oh, it could hold you back from being available. But in Sweden, it's much more open-minded. Do talk about the skills you can bring to the job in a humble way, but only after the interviewer has asked you directly. Um, this is a big mistake that I used to make in, in my earlier days of interviewing. I got a lot of interviews, but not a lot of job offers because as an American, I'm trained to have the mentality of selling myself and to be really assertive and firm and confident. And that's not the humble Swedish way. And I actually learned later on um, after speaking to some Swedish consultants that this, this is a no-no. So I learned to only offer certain information that could be seen as bragging when I'm asked first. So that's another big piece of advice I would give to you guys. What I would not recommend to do is do not try to impress them with your accomplishments. So I'll give you an example. Instead, you should be focusing on acknowledging your accomplishments rather than leading with it in an, in an attempt to impress. So for example, instead of saying, I managed a team, that produced 2 million in profit, you could change the wording to something like, I had the role of a manager and together with my team, we reached our goal of producing 2 million in profit. So you're sort of saying the same thing, but in a more humble way. So I would practice your main leading statements where you need to talk about what you can bring to the table and what you've done and practice how to do it in a way that's a bit more Swedish, let's say. Uh, don't try too hard to sell yourself. As I mentioned, I made that mistake for the for a long time. And in some cultures, for example, in America or also in India, it could work. And in fact, you are taught to do that. And now that you're in Sweden, you really need to retrain your thinking about how should I explain myself? It won't necessarily work in Sweden. And in fact, I've been told that it's seen as a red flag. Um, so if you find yourself getting interviews, but you're not getting a job offer, See if you're doing any of these things. And if you are, you might want to readjust. The next slide that we had is actually for networking in Sweden. So I'm going to give you some of my advice about networking, what I've learned about networking here and had a lot of success with. I would say focus the most on gaining referrals because Sweden particularly values referrals, sometimes even more than those who are the most qualified for a job. So if they have two people and one person is qualified and another one is somewhere in the same zone of qualified, maybe even slightly less, but they are referred to the hiring person, they're going to feel more comfortable going with that person because they trust the credibility more than, let's say, an anonymous person. Um, I would even suggest to, to focus maybe 60% on networking and 40% on job searching as an unknown person, let's say, because it can be quite powerful. I would also say do learn the cultural etiquette here by understanding the, the rules of the game, as I call them, you can accelerate your experience here. And I'll, I'll give you a good example. One of our students, she was searching for a job in finance for almost seven years, seven years. That's a, it was a really long time to not get any job offers in her industry. And after taking our networking course, she actually was referred to a job in her field within two months. And then she actually got her job, which is quite amazing. But it really what it comes down to is when you learn what these little changes are, you can see significant traction in your experience. So if you feel frustrated or stuck right now, just try to remember that it, it might just be a little change of strategy that could change everything for you. I would say don't expect to socialize with the same results in Sweden as you would get in your own culture or other cultures. There are different rules here and you might hit a brick wall if you don't learn them. Sweden actually has such a different specific unique job searching culture that it's even different than Finland and Denmark and they're all in the Nordics. There are similarities but try to focus on learning specifically to Sweden and try to be you know, cautious of taking advice that's abroad or on the internet and generalized. I would also say don't be too assertive or pushy or demanding of Swedes. They prefer their space before making decisions or commitments to social activities and friendships. So, you know, learn to be patient. If someone doesn't accept your invite for a fika right away, it doesn't mean they won't 
accept your invite in a couple months later. Um, so those are some of my uh, basic tips for networking. So as I mentioned, InterTalents does have a networking course. I did decide to put together a course that is about eight to 10 hours long if you'd like to learn more specific high level advanced networking techniques that are specific to Sweden. So if you are interested, I am offering a discount code where you can get 100 crown off. If you're not ready to invest in that, but you are still very interested in learning about more of my networking techniques, we do have a free webinar. Uh, there's a code up here if you have if the special offer number two. So you're welcome to go there and check that out. And finally, if you need to find us, here's my contact information. You're very welcome to reach out to me, LinkedIn, email. I love talking to people about this. Um, and I hope that you guys got some interesting information <laughs> out of us today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda, for sharing your experience and tips and also, yeah, like your services. Uh, hopefully you can help more students. And if anybody has a question, uh, you're welcome to write down your question in the chat. We will go through all the comments and questions at the end of the webinar. Now we're going to continue with the more interactive part of this webinar. So now I'm going to launch a poll with five key questions uh, covering the topics that we've discussed today. And you can choose what type of activities or what type of recommendations could work better for you. Uh, based on your results, we can go through them and evaluate like what was more insightful or more helpful for you. So I'm going to launch the poll now and I hope you all can see it. We're gonna take about five minutes uh, to take some answers and then we can see uh, based on the answers, what kind of reflections we can make out of this. We will finish with some concluding reflections about this topic. I can see that there is a question for Amanda. So um, Amanda, if you're here with us, yeah, I can see you now. <laughs> Uh, yes, so the question is uh, whether your interview strategy also works for engineers. For example, in my last thesis project interview, my supervisor did not ask me anything personal, but all about my professional competencies. It did surprise me and felt confused with that. I have learned from you. Yeah, yeah, I actually saw that right before we went to our um, breakout rooms. And I think it actually is a good point to bring up that there are certain industries, especially those that are more technical focused, where they actually might be more forthcoming about learning your practical skills. I work in marketing. So people, generally speaking, in, in corporate, let's say they do want to know, especially if you're working with recruiters, you have to remember that recruiters think very like they, they think differently than their hiring managers. A recruiter is going to try to find someone who has the full package, a good fit for the company. They're being hired to think in a way that a hiring manager wouldn't. But if you're having this interview directly with a hiring manager who's used to working in a technical field, it could actually be the case that they want to know straight to the point your competencies. But I say the most important thing is that he invited you to talk about it. You, you got to wait till they invite you. If he goes straight to it, you're fine. Then it's fine. You can talk about it, especially if you're in these sort of technical industries. So I would say just look, try to learn more about the hiring process. Is it a recruiter? Is it the hiring manager? Is it a small company? Many small companies actually don't really know how to properly interview. Um, and it also, I, I know this can be very uh, direct, but Honestly, in my personal experience, you look at the generation, let's say, that they grew up and have they actually had training to adapt to the newer recruiting strategies or are they still recruiting the, the old school way? Um, so I hope that answers your question. But the, the summary is, wait till they invite you. If they invite you, then yeah, go for it. Yeah, I would also like to add to uh, this answer that there is not a perfect strategy or there is not a perfect way to find a job. I worked in a company that were really technical and focused on like your skills. So I didn't get so many questions about my personal life. Uh, but in, I think like when I've talked to other companies, yeah, they were really asking me, where do you live and who do you live with and stuff like that, which for me, I found a bit uh, odd as the first conversation I don't know I just felt like yeah I don't know if that was what I was expected to be asked uh, for instance uh, so yeah I think like you really have to adapt to anything 
that goes in your way. It, it depends of the company, the personality of the hiring manager. It depends of, on many things. And like Amanda uh, uh, mentioned before, not all companies really know how to hire or follow like HR practices. So be prepared to meet anybody with different uh, evalu evaluation processes. So I think you need to be prepared for that. And can I just add one more thing to that? I would say treat um, interviewing and the hiring process in Sweden sort of a little bit almost like dating. Like you really have to kind of, you're trying to see if you're a good match and just to learn like their style of communication. Most people don't show up to a date and say, I have this, I have this car, I have this house, I make this much money. Essentially, that's how people who are interviewing in Sweden sort of see it. But if you do happen to find a personality who speaks that language, then, you know, I, I'm, I mean, I'm sorry if this sounds a bit vague, but it is kind of true. You have to adapt. But generally speaking, the majority of hiring experiences do sort of start off slow, getting to know you and then into the competencies. And if that interviewer wants to know your competencies right away, now you know that's your strategy. So I hope I hope that answered the question. Great. And yes, it is going to be 6.30 now. So this is the moment when we have to close uh, this webinar. And lastly, I would like you all to visit switchtosweden.se and also feel free to contact Anna or me if you have further questions. And uh, I would like to highlight that we had two matchmaking activities running at the moment. One is for all international students to meet companies in the north of Sweden. And the other one is for all international students to meet any company in Sweden. There is not a specific region. So these activities are going to be conducted in March. So feel free to register now, uh, log in your skills, upload your CV, and let's hope you can have a positive match and you can meet new companies. And also I hope this webinar has been helpful. Uh, Again, I think like these are the key insights that you need to know. This is how it worked for me. I have had three different work, work experiences in Sweden. And this is like the best advice based on my experience, Amanda's experience, and also the people that we have interviewed that is currently working right now. So I really hope that you find it helpful. Yes, so we need to close the webinar now. So thank you so much for participating and thank you, Amanda, again.